Okay, so we're gonna go over what I have. Here. It's just gonna be real quick. Um so basically my relationships. Let's go more in depth. Um I view myself as a business. That's one. That's how I think. So people question like how do smart people think? Get away from genius. That's that's a PhD that no one understands. No one understands genius. So stop throwing it around as if you understand it. All right. It's like the F word or the B word. You throw it around as if you understand it. No, you don't. Stop using it. If you don't understand the word, stop using it. All right. So. You can use it on your own, on your own time, because you're you're experimenting. But when you're in public, um, you need to carry yourself as a business. Don't promote something when you can't back it up. Don't say, "Well, we can ship it to you in in less than five minutes," when you can't. So don't use vocabulary as if you understand those vocabulary. Don't wear a Gucci belt as if you understand what it means. You're a business. So I see a lot of businesses have bad practices. You promote one thing and then you do another. You promote one thing and then you do another. So you're not reliable. I don't invest in your business. When you're unreliable. So I, so to keep it simple, how do smart people think? They think of themselves as a business. Right? So Taylor Swift slowly, um, got into relationships, speaking on relationships. As she was dating. She didn't right away go. I'm going to sing about relationships. No. She sang about being 15. She sang about being 22. Just the stuff she knows. The stuff she can back up. And as she started dating. Then she started talking about relationships. So she, So she's a reliable business. Investing in Taylor Swift is a good investment because she doesn't promote Gucci belts and can't back it up. She doesn't promote this big personality and then she can't back it up. She takes it as she goes. So she's a reliable business. Um, so how do smart people think? They think of themselves as a business. Marketing, investment, those are the two things. Marketing, marketing yourself, and investment. Um, Taylor Swift is good at investment. She's not great at marketing. She's the biggest pop star out there. Everybody should be following her. Everybody. But not everybody follows her. She's not good at marketing. Um, so me, I want to learn how to market myself and I want to be careful with investment. Just like Warren Buffett, he's very careful. He's like, oh, the housing market looks sketchy. Um, these type of businesses look, uh, look sketchy. He doesn't invest and his portfolio just becomes a billionaire. They invest smart, right? Sketchy businesses look sketchy for a reason. Um, so that's one. Um, smart people think of themselves as a business. They think like a businessman, businesswoman. All right. 
Um, so when you're out of control, the first one. Um, I was just lying in bed and I was thinking about it. Um, at Pacific, they were bullying me pretty bad. I got bullied pretty bad. As you go, as you go through, this is why I'm careful. I wasn't shy. I was careful. Because if I show myself and I can't handle it, I'll get bullied really bad. When I can't handle it. Um, at the same, t but when I can't handle it. So when I can handle it, when I was getting bullied at Pacific, you know, the barometer of like, let's go, let's like, it goes zero, like, um, miles per hour goes zero to 60, right? Using that as an example, uh, when I was getting bullied, it was at zero of how affected I am, how it affects me. It was always at zero. So when that happens, when, when they bully me, I kind of look at them like an older sibling. Like, man, you, you kids really don't know what you're doing. I tease people. I never bully them. Just tease. And I even tell you, I'm just teasing you. The kids at Pacific were literally bullying me. There was no buffer. There was no, oh, we're just teasing you. There was none of that. It was literal bullying. It was gentle, but it was still bullying. So I was looking at him like an older sibling, like, all right, keep this in the back of my mind. These kids bully. They don't know what they're doing. Um, so that was that when, when you're out of control, usually I leave you alone. I don't judge you, but when you're out of control, now I have the appearance of an older sibling. Like, Hey, shame on you. You're bullying. Just like that. Uh, it's that simple. And then, uh, business we just spoke about first. And then, um, so let's go on. On, on vocabulary. My vocabulary is very limited, but complex in understanding. That was the difference with me. I didn't have a breadth of vocabulary, but the vocabulary I did have, it's really deep understanding. And a lot of kids don't have that. So in sixth grade, best friends was thrown thrown around, right? This is best friends was the word of um hype. Um for college kids, tipsy when you're drinking. Um what's what's the words that kids use today? Um Uh, the, the 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 phrase they use on fleet, you know, just just um, um, what is it? It's um pop culture words. What what's the, the the trendy words, right? Um, squad goal for Taylor Swift and and girls. Girls are starting to use squad goal goals now. Um, in sixth grade, best friend, and girlfriend, boyfriend. Very trendy words. Um, but in sixth grade for me, best friends were being thrown around as the word. Right? You want to be called your best friend or you want to use that word somehow. Put it in your sentences somehow. Like, oh, men, do you have a girlfriend? Oh, men, um, you would be a good boyfriend. Throw that word around and you get popular. So best friend was the popular word. It was the word everyone was trying to learn. What is best friend? We're all in sixth grade trying to learn that word. 
Um, and I had a I had a good friend Andrew and Tony McDonald. Tony McDonald. Amen. Is your best friend Andrew or Tony McDonald? And I'm like, both. Right. So so in sixth grade we were trying to learn that word. And Andrew and Tony were my best friends. I would hang out with them a lot. So I was trendy. I was always up to date. I was always very trendy. Um, so that was that. And so, so my older brother and Alex and Pacific, they're not word people, right? So they're touching me, they're grabbing on me. No, just say, I'm your best friend, move on. So what coaches say in football is, um, take the check down and move on. That's what coaches say in football. Just take the check down, don't play hero ball. Take the check down, go move on to the next play. Keep it simple. So same with me, just use words. Say, I'm your best friend, I love you, move on to the next place, stop playing hero ball. So for my older brother, he's my best friend. He was my best friend at home. And then moving on to high school, Alex was my best friend. Right? They're both not good with words. Take the check down and move on. Use words. So my older brother Huang was my best friend. Um, Alex was my best friend in high school. And, and the one girl that was my best friend was Danielle. Um, she, I saw her like as one of the guys. She would, she would dirt bike and tell me about it. And she, she drove sports cars and I saw her as one of the guys. I was very open with her. Like I was open with the guys. I'm very open with my older brother. I'm very open with Alex. And I'm even more open with Danielle because she's teaching me how to talk to girls too. But I saw her as one of the guys. So it went from best friend, best friend, best friend. Right? Use words and then move on. Um, so let's go with, I, I, I hate when people think of me as a child, right? Like when, like, like, like they treat me like a child. I don't like that. So if I get the feeling that you're treating me like a child, I would do everything I can to scare the crap out of you. Um, so that you show me more respect. So it, it's that simple. So if I'm trying to scare you, it's because you don't respect me. Um, it's Laguna Beach. So like the show on MTV Laguna Beach, um, that's how I talk. Um, so on the show, Steven and Kristen, uh, the show revolved around how Steven interacted, how I summarize it, is the, the show summarizes as Steven's interaction with girls and his friends. He was always around Steven. You think it's about Kristen, but it's not. It's about Steven and how he interacts with girls and how he interacts with his family and how he interacts with the community of Laguna. Right? He says, oh, typical Laguna. Everyone knows the gossip. Right? That's how he interacts with Laguna. You want to summarize. Don't just watch shows. Summarize it. What's going on? Who is the focal point? How does the focal point interact with the characters around? Um, so this is how I speak. As if Stockton was Laguna Beach. Right? Um, what words do you use? Right? Laguna Beach was using rad, 
and you know those Laguna Beach terms. In Stockton, you use best friend, right? Those are the words we use in Stockton. Um, so I would say my older brother was my best friend. Um, Alex was my best friend in high school, and in college, um, Gina and I were, were weird. I didn't really open up to her. We were like figuring each other out. We weren't best friends. Um, Danielle was my best friend, so that's how I speak. Like like Stephen interacts with Kristen and LC Lauren and and his friends. How does he speak? This is how I speak. You're my best friend. That, that's how I speak in Stockton. Um, so it's like Laguna Beach, but we speak a little differently. We have a different dialect. We have different terminology. So it's very much like Laguna Beach, but we use different words. Um, so... If I'm not solving people's problems, this is, this is what I talk about. I talk about um, stuff I'm weak at, relationships. I talk about how I'm a business and I'm trying to build my business, right? I'm trying to be Bill Gates. I'm trying to be, um, who's that other billionaire? Warren Buffett. I am. I look at them and I'm like, I want to be them. I'm trying to be Apple's trillion dollar business. You know, trying to be the Steve Jobs. All right, just because I'm in Stockton and my career hasn't kicked off yet, that doesn't mean I don't aspire to be better than them. I do. I aspire to be way better than my high school career, college career, in anything. I aspire to be better than um, Bill Gates, create better products, better products than Apple, better investment than Warren Buffett. I aspire, I, so I study them and I aspire to be better than them. So I will have better technology than Apple and Microsoft. I will have a better portfolio than Warren Buffett. I aspire to be better than them. That That's what I talk about when I'm not um, solving other people's problems. Um, again, with the best friends and, and vocabulary, um, my, vo my vocabulary was already advanced in elementary school and everyone was really behind. They would use words, but they didn't understand it. I knew that best friend was a word of endearment it had a lot of meaning behind it. So I didn't I didn't just say everyone was my best friend, right? Brent and Lisa and and Brittany wasn't my best friend. It was very specific. It was the people you hang out with. Andrew was my best friend. I was around him. And Tony McDonald was my best friend. I was always around him. So I understood words and I knew how to use them. Um yeah, I understood the importance of words. So speaking of, so now let's get on relationships. Um, let's go from Danielle to Gina. This is helping me out too, because I don't, I, I haven't given it thought either. So let's go, let's talk about Danielle, let's talk about Gina, and then let's go to Jessica um, on who do I like more. Um... The reason why I want to go Danielle, Gina, and Jessica, because it goes from who I'm comfortable with down to who I'm not comfortable with. Um, Danielle, we would text each other. We would tell each other, like, we're best friends te via text. But when we're with each other, we get kind of shy. And so Danielle kind of knew that, oh, he's he's very confident in his texting but not as confident when you're face-to-face, person-to-person. So she was like, okay, I understand that. So she lets me be confident here and then let me be a little bit shyer here. So she knew how I worked. Uh, Gina didn't know that. She was all over the place. She was like, one day you say I love you. The next day you're not saying anything. 
I don't understand. Uh, Gina didn't understand it. Um, and Danielle was a year older than me, so she, she, she understood that I was just a kid. Gina and I were the same age, so it was very... She didn't know what was going on. There's no identifier. Like, what's going on? Um, so Danielle kind of used the, well, he's younger than me. This is what younger kids do. So she had a, she had an understanding of what's going on. Gina didn't have that. She was just like, I have no clue what's going on. So Danielle was like my best friend. Um, why didn't it work out? Um, she always invited herself over. She's just like, I can party with your friends and things like that. And I already had the mindset that um, you're not going anywhere in your career. So, so you're kind of holding me back. I already had that mindset. Um... So if I have that mindset, everything you say is kind of like, well, you still just go to Delta College, junior college. You're not, you, you haven't told me that you're, you know, transferring to a four year. You're not aspiring to anything greater. Um, and I'm very ambitious. I need some, I need a partner who is just as ambitious as me. So I remember... Um, in anatomy class, that's where I met her. At I took another class at Delta, Delta, when I was at Pacific, um, to round out my um. To round out my courses taken. Cause I changed majors, and then I had to, I had to get those credits back, so I took the credits at Delta College. And she was, and we took a test and I was like, man, I could have done better. I got a B on it. And I'm like, I know I could have done better. And Danielle was, and Danielle got a B as well. I, I can tell she's smart, but she wasn't dedicated. She just wasn't dedicated. She was just, she's more into boys, which is another thing. Um, relationships are very easy for girls. You gotta understand that it's so easy for them, all right. But business is very hard for girls. That's why girls, you see them always aspire to relationships. Boys always aspire to business. So that's what's easy for them. So Danielle was really working. She is working, but she's working at relationships, and she wasn't working on her grades. I can tell she's smart, right? But I can tell she wasn't dedicated because she was like, oh, I would have gotten a C. Um, hinting like, you know, if you asked me on dates more, if you would have hang out with me more. Um, n not that she would, but like, you know, she was hinting like, hey, let's hang out more. And we exchanged phone numbers and stuff, um, kept in contact. Um, but she was, she kept hinting that that's not her focus. That's not her interest. She just wanted to be in a relationship. And I wasn't. I wanted to be a businessman. Um, so everything she said, it was always off-putting to me. Where it's like, uh, it's like, you can come over. Like, we'll be alone. And we can do whatever. Uh, I would say that to her just to, just to get myself more confident talking to girls. And she's like, I'm down, right? And I'm like, oh, but my roommate's still here. My roommate Charles is still here. And she's like, I don't care. And I was like, yeah, but I got other things to do. Never mind. Like that. Um, I would say it. I would show interest in her. But then, and then if I give it second thought, it just wasn't as interesting to me. I, I wanted to be a businessman. That was my only goal. Um, so that was Danielle. Um, 
she was she was like my best friend really like i i opened up to when i was getting bullied i would text her like um do you think i'm a good person why am i getting bullied am i not a good person that, that's why i was wondering like why am i getting bullied so bad like i must not be a good person people are picking on me so i texted her like do you think i'm a good person i think she texts back like kids are mean like she understood how kids are she's a year older and he's like they're just being kids um so i was very open with her uh, via text we weren't as in person to person but i was getting more confident um talking about my feelings and things and opening up um yeah the reason why i didn't go anywhere is her aspiration in business wasn't as high as my aspirations. So that's why it didn't work out. Now, going on to Gina, uh, what I liked about the relationship with Danielle was I got to be open with her. And she was very understanding. She wasn't trying to um, push herself onto onto things or anything like that. She just wants to hang out. And I like that. That's like hanging out with the guys. The guys just want to hang out. So what I liked about Danielle was she was just chill. She was so chill. Like the problem is she's so chill that she didn't have any aspirations. That was the problem. But what I liked about her was she was chill. She was like she was like one of the guys. Um, so with Gina, um, so she kept talking about part, Danielle kept talking about parties and I was used to that with Alex. Alex was always talking about parties. So I kind of made the connection where it's like, so when Alex is always talking about party, I'm like, you're not. You're not goal oriented. You're not. You're not trying to be a business. So Alex was so chill that it just rubbed me wrong, where he he didn't have any aspirations. Uh, same with my older brother. They're chill, but they had no aspirations. They didn't aspire to anything great. So that's why I kind of a lot of my best friends kind of fall off for that reason. Um. So, so yeah, when Danielle started talking about parties, I'm like, oh, well, Alex talks about parties too. Like, you got to move on. Remember, take the check down and move on, right? Okay, college is fun. Okay, college parties. Okay, take the check down. Move on. Have bigger dreams. Um. So they were all stuck playing hero ball, really. They just couldn't take the check down and move on. Um, so with Gina, uh, I like Gina. Gina, like, she looked like she was aspiring to something great. Um, she was taking art. That's hard. That's a hard major. That's obvious someone who's aspiring to something great. What went wrong was... Um, It wasn't great enough. It, 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 it was more than Danielle, but it wasn't great enough for me. Right? It's like, um, it's like Taylor Swift is good at investment, but she's bad at marketing. It's like that. Where I see a flaw and I'm like, uh, nah, I'm probably not going to invest in you. It's like that. So that's how I see people. Like, hanging out with Huang is cool, but the more I study him, that's a bad investment. Same with Alex. Alex is cool, but then when I study you, you're not as talented as you think. So I evaluate people that way. It's like, oh, you're cool to hang out with. And then I look into you, I'm like, oh, but your aspirations aren't, your work ethic isn't up there. 
So those are bad investments. I don't invest in them. Um, so Gina was the same way. She she was a notch more than um, Danielle. See how I don't I don't speak about holding hands and stuff. I speak on business terms. So with Gina, she was a notch more, but I was hoping she was more aspirational and she wasn't. So that kind of that investment was not what I wanted. Yes, I could have dated them and I could have taught them, but that's again dragging me down. That's wasting my time. Um, so that's why Gina didn't work out. What I liked about Gina was um, she was she was pretty talented. That's what I liked about her. She was pretty talented. I mean, she was mediocre compared to me, but she, she has some talent, and she really worked on her talent. Even though it, it was a slow progress, I can see that she really liked her talent, and that's what I liked about her. Um, she was really hardworking. She worked. She took out loans. She joined a sorority. So she really worked hardworking. Um, but she just didn't aspire in her works. I looked at her works and it looked... Uh, she was making ribbons. She was making um, arts and craft. She wasn't aspiring to renaissance level, which I was at. I was trying to be a genius. I was trying to be Warren Buffett. I was trying to be Steve Jobs. I was trying to be Apple. I was trying to be Microsoft. Um, and Gina was more like MySpace. Where MySpace was like, it was coming up, but it didn't know what it was. And then it just fell apart. So I was kind of looking at Gina. Do you know what you're doing? And it looked like Gina did not know. Even though she was talented, she didn't know what she was doing. And if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to drag me down. So that's a bad investment. Um, I knew what I was doing. I was trying to be Steve Jobs, Apple. I was trying to be Bill Gates, Microsoft. I was trying to be Warren Buffett. I knew what I wanted. I'm going to be that. So anything else is going to drag me down. So what I liked about Gina was she was really focused on her talent. Even though it was minor, she was really focused on it. And I like that. I like that in a girl where you know what your talents are and you're really working on your craft. I really like that in a girl. So that's what attracted me to Gina was she was in art. That's a hard major. And she knew she was talented and she really worked at it. Just because you're not as gifted as I am, doesn't mean you don't work hard. I respect people who work hard, even if you're not as gifted as someone else. I respect that. So I respect it the heck. I love Danielle as a best friend to chill. I respected Gina. She had all my respect. Because she worked hard. She worked, she was in a sorority, and she was in um, studio art. That's a hard major. It wasn't just studying in all mine. It was literally going to work. That's what it feels like to be in studio art. It feels like you're going to work every day. It's not sitting there and highlighting and writing on the whiteboard. It's going into work. It's a job. So I respected Gina. Gina has all my respect. Danielle was my best friend because she was chill. Gina was the person I respected. That's what I like in a girl. They're chill and, and they're hardworking. So you earn my respect. So that was Gina. Um, with Jessica, man, she's hard to evaluate because I didn't I didn't have much to work on. I didn't talk to her much. 
I talked to I talked to Danielle and Gina a lot more than I talked to Jessica. So she's she's hard to she's hard to evaluate. But what I have on her is scary. If um if, if dream if if team NFL's teams drafted on a one year um evaluation on a one year tape like Mitchell Trubisky or Trey Lance, they only had one year of tape. What do you got on them? Um, that's like Jessica. I only have this one memory of her where we were doing PowerPoint and, 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 and she was an A student, right? So I got that. She's a hard worker. She's an A student and everything else is speculation. And I don't like working in speculation. Oh, she moved because she was aspiring. She didn't tell me that. That's speculation. Um, I know she was an A student. I know teachers love her. Um, I know teachers give her responsibility. And, and in fifth grade, given that much responsibility in fifth grade, I was like, it was weird to me. I'm like, why are you calling me in? Why is it not the teacher? That's weird. We're in fifth grade. I wasn't that aspirational in fifth grade. I just wanted to hang out. It was weird, man. So when she when she was calling people in, I remember uh, Mr. Tahana was like, uh, Jessica's going to call you guys in. I'm like, Did I hear that right? Wait, are you going to call us in or is Jessica? It's like, no, Jessica is going to call you in. Why? Why Jessica? What's so special about her? Lisa was an A student as well. I've known her since third grade, right? Mrs. Wright was always like, Lisa knows how to recite poems. She's always talkative. Lisa, it should be Lisa. Right? Or at least, um, um, my other friend, uh, what's his name? The short friend with the blonde hair. Dang, I forget his name. But he was close to the teacher as well. But And he's very talkative. You know, I would I would think that it would be the talkative person who who gets called in. I'd be like, oh, obviously. But Jessica didn't talk to everyone. She was an A student, but she was reserved. So she got the spot, and I'm like jealous. I'm like, why am I jealous of a quiet kid? That's weird. So I got these new feelings where I'm like, why am I jealous of you? I didn't like her. Now that I think about it. Now that I think about it, I did not like Jessica. I, I think I hate her. If, I, if I'm being honest. I'm the star. I'm the focal point. Always have been. So for her to take that away from me, it pissed me off actually. So when she called me in, I'm kind of like off put it by her. I'm like, yeah, whatever. So you're the favorite. So what? So I'm the favorite amongst my peers. You don't have that. You don't have that award. So when she called me in, I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> right. I was like, all right, whatever, man. So, so, so when Mr. Tejano said, that, I'm like, Jessica. Of all people, it should be us. We're the popular kids. Dennis. It was Dennis. Me, Dennis, Brent. We are the popular kids. Who the heck is Jessica? So. So when Jessica got. So when Jessica was calling us in and it wasn't one of us. It was what it was not one of us. I was like, man, forget Jessica. 
So I went in there waiting my turn. So I was like, okay, you want to call Jessica in? Okay, whatever. And and when she called me in, she was all happy and smiling that it's me. I'm not happy. I hope you figure that one out. So when she called me in, she was happy with me, right? Oh, men. I'm like, man, shut up. So she was at the door, said men. And I was like, yeah, whatever. So I walked in there. I was like, all right, what you want? And I sat down. It was a cafeteria and it was on the stage. So we were sitting on the stage. And she's like, um, so did you do this? And did you do this? And are you ready for this or something like that? And I was already jealous. I'm like looking at her like, yeah, I got it done. Uh -huh. It's all done. I did the work. Probably not an A level like you, but whatever is done. Like that. I, I I just had that attitude where it's like, I'm over this. I'm so over this. Like Mr. Tejano chose you of all people. Of all people, she he chose you. So I was like, I'm over this. And 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 there was what um when the conversation was dying down, I was like, Is that it? Is that is that it? And she's like, yeah, that's it. And we just sat there for a moment. And she's like, I'm moving. She was smiling the whole time. Um, talking to me. She's a smiley person. And she was like, I'm moving. And I'm like, good. I hope it's right now. I was done with Jessica, man. I was over it, man. I just... You don't take my stardom, man. Huang doesn't do it. Alex doesn't do it. You ain't taking it. Danielle, Gina. When when I was thinking that um, um, Dan Castor was favoring Gina, I was like, I ain't having that. I ain't having it. Not gonna happen. I'm the star and I'll always be the star. So when Jessica said she was gonna, uh, she's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm moving. All right? She just kind of looked at her board and she just told me like, I'm moving. She didn't look at me. She's like, oh, I'm moving. And I'm like, oh, okay. Is that it? Are you moving right now? I hope you're moving right now. Cause I've had enough of you. Don't ever. Coming to my space. Taking what belongs to me. It belongs to me. I worked hard for that. I gave up my grades for that. I'm always helping someone out. So if it's not my apostles that are chosen. The kids that I raised. The kids that I taught. That aren't chosen. Now we got a problem. When you're friends with me, I teach you my ways. So what Mr. Tejano is saying is, there's someone better than you. Better than me? Better than me. There's someone better than me. I'm not having it. I don't live my life thinking there's someone better than me. I'm not having it. I don't understand it. I don't comprehend it. How can she be better than me? How? When I taught everyone my ways. When Lisa and Brent when these kids went to high school, they were chill. They learned how to chill. Where do you think they got it from? I was chilling throughout all of elementary school. I didn't care about grades. I didn't care what teachers loved me. I didn't care about none of that. I was chill. And by high school, they were chill.
Who is better than me? I didn't understand. I'm a kid. I'm just a kid. I just don't understand. I can't comprehend it. How can you be better than me when I have extensions of me? In Lisa, in Brent, in Dennis, in other kids. Those are extensions of me. And by you not choosing any of them, you're saying I'm not good at my job. And I'm not having it. I'm not having anyone saying I'm not good at my job. I'm the best at my job. As a kid, that's how ambitious I was. I get pissed off. You're saying this business is better than mine. You say this business invests better than I do. And she's smiling all the time. What is that about? Why are you smiling all the time? What's so funny? Why don't you tell me? Why don't you talk to me? Why don't you involve me in your life? Now I feel like Danielle. You don't involve me in your life. Why not? What makes you so much better than me that you can't involve me in your life? You got to move? I'm getting too close. That you got to move? What do you have? You got an Apple business under your belt? You got, what do you have? You got a business card in fifth grade? What do you have? I can't stand it. So that was Jessica. And and the other evaluation, one, she was chosen by the teacher, which pissed me off. Can't stand that. The second evaluation is the PowerPoint. Why are you talking about the Boston Tea Party? I'm no sucker. Just like um, my self-portrait was landing the triple Lutz, triple toe, meaning it's a double, triple Lutz. That was a landing of a triple Lutz, triple toe, okay? No joke. My self-portrait in the um, admission, that was a triple Lutz, triple toe landing. That's hard to do. Why is Jessica talking about, I, I don't care about the multiverse. Why in fifth grade do you have the confidence? In fifth grade, do you know you'll get bullied for that? Do you know that? Do you know you'll get bullied for having A's in school? Do you know that? Do you know who rules the school? In elementary school? In high school? In college? Do you know who rules? It's the kids with bad grades. And I was one of them. We rule the school, not you, not the A students. So for you to have the guts to show off your A's and show off being prized by the teacher and to show off in our faces Who are you? So when Jessica was talking about the Boston Tea Party, I was having, I was, I was livid. I really was, man. I was not having it with this girl. Forget the dating. Just her as a competition. I wasn't having it, man. It was a good thing she moved. I would have stayed pissed off my whole life. If she followed me into high school, it would have pissed me off. She was my competition. So Danielle was my best friend. Um, Gina was who I respected. Jessica is my competition. Can't stand that girl. I can't stand it. Every time she was around me, it was like nails on a chalkboard. I couldn't stand that girl. 
Why are you talking about the Boston Tea Party? We did not study the Boston Tea Party. I would have remembered. I'm not stupid. I just choose not to have good grades. I'm not dumb. Understand? I'm not an idiot. I choose. I have choice in elementary school, in my parents' house. I have choice. No one has choice. Choice is freedom, and freedom is for adults. I chose to not give an F. That's what adults do. So why did you choose to show off? Jessica. Why did you choose that? It wasn't for me. You moved on. You must be doing this your whole life. You choose to show off. Because you know who the bullies are. I run the classroom. I'm the bully. And you still show off in my face. That's disrespectful to me. In my hard work. I don't care if I'm 9 years old. I don't care if I'm 10 years old. I don't care if I'm 11 years old. You disrespected me. In my face. And I'm not having it. At 11 years old, I'm not having it. I worked hard to be 11 years old. I worked hard. You're not about to disrespect my business. We never studied the Boston Tea Party. I am sorry. We did not. We did not go over the Boston Tea Party in, sh in social studies. We did not. I did not remember that. You must have studied it on your own. In your free time. Because that came out of nowhere. Why do you have interest in the Boston Tea Party in the first place? In the American Revolution in the first place? That's something boys do. That's like playing video games. What girl have you ever seen is interested in the Boston Tea Party? They're, in, they're interested in arts and craft, in their hair, makeup. Not the Boston Tea Party. It pissed me off. I'm not having it with Jessica, man. She's a show-off. She competes. She does weird stuff like smile at you. She does weird stuff like play with the boy stuff. What is that? So my question to Jessica was, was I even a competition? Was I even a challenge to her? That's what I want to know. Or was she so... For me, my brother's not... My brother's not competition. Alex's not competition. Danielle's not competition. Gina's not competition. I'm in my own world. I can blow you off. Was that what you were doing? Are you so invested in yourself that you blew me off? Like I'm nothing. I'm just like everyone else. That's how I see relationships. It is not holding hands and kissing and any of that crap that means nothing. Or are you going to challenge me to become better? Or are you going to be mediocre and make me mediocre too? Because I ain't having that. Jessica just rubs me the wrong way. I do not like that girl. So I landed a triple Lutz on my admissions. To prove. I had it in fifth grade too. I chose. 
not to use it. It was a choice. Why? Because I did not respect the education system. That's why. Y'all look like a bunch of bums to me. If you don't try hard, I won't either. And you won't find me. I know how to hide myself. Only someone who is talented will find me. And clearly you weren't. So no. If the education system doesn't respect themselves, I don't respect you. I'm not going to show myself to a bunch of losers. I'll show myself when I'm good and ready. And it ain't to Jessica either.